a welcome to the Leeds United podcast. <laughs> I think we should do that every week. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shout. Shall we? Yeah. Go on then. Nah. Bet, give us your best radio voice. <clears throat> Oh God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome oh to God. the Leeds United official podcast <laughs> with myself. That's Jermaine more like Michael. wedding DJ than radio presenter. Well, I weddings think, do you it? go to? <laughs> weddings <laughs> I go to are upbeat. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, who's ready for the next one? This is the official Leeds United podcast. We threw it over to you to see if you could come up with a Rafinha chant on the podcast that hopefully at some point in the not too distant future, we will be able to hear booming inside Ellen Road. So thank you so much to BBC Breakfast Sports presenter Mike Bushell, who's been in touch this week with his chant. <laughs> Hi, everyone team. Absolutely long time no see. Hope you're well. Loving the podcast. It's absolutely brilliant. Listen all the time while doing my runs and jogs around Media City and stuff like that. And I heard a bit about the Rafinha chant. We need a Rafinha song, a, a Rafa anthem that we can sing from the terraces when fans can come back. Um, so this is a start. I'm sure you can improve on it with your intellectual might and creativity there on the podcast at Leeds United. But how about this with the actions as well, which don't work so quite so well on the audio podcast, but you know, that to begin with, the little I spy. And how about I spy a fina, he's gonna skin ya, he's from Brasilia, scores for Bielsa. I spy a fina, he's gonna skin ya, comes oh, from mate. Brasilia, to, scores for he's, Bielsa. He's, kind of, he's holding back. Sure, he's holding back. With all your listeners. Cheers. <laughs> I think I think he was still going there, Bex. I think I he was care. still giving it. I don't care. Uh, do you know what? As well, he did send a video, and close. the actions were great. I feel like we didn't quite get one hundred percent of the performance there. It was wonderful. I'm just what trying to saying, picture Patrick, the Leeds fans singing that, that and whatever. Over? Imagine doing the actions as well. I, I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sold on that one. I don't think. I mean. <laughs> He's going to have to do it live on BBC Breakfast, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. We're really going to get the full effect of it. He's going to have to do it for us live. Three, two, one. Mm -hmm. He's Brazilian. Mm -hmm. He didn't even cost 20 million. Rafinha, he's brilliant. And he plays well on done. the wing for Leeds. <laughs> yeah. You, that was brilliant. You. You were excellent. This. We'd have ruined it. You left, left me high and dry there. <laughs> All Leeds, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. I kind of expect it now. I'm kind of at this point where um, I don't even really want to devote too much time of the show to it. It's frustrating. It's annoying. Obviously, it's the first goal. It would have changed the game. But I, I just... Um, it's the rule. It's not going to change this season. So we can we talk about something haven't, else. Um, haven't they said that it might change, though? Arsene Wenger might change. try out Arsene Next Wenger's. Next season, I had, well, I had a chat with um, Dermot O'Leary mm. about that this morning on, um, yeah. on Sky Sports, and he said they're bringing the Arsene Wenger rule in, where the... Oh, it, it's just flipping confusing. The heel of the attacker, if that's in line with any part of the defender's body, then technically it's onside, or something along those lines. It's... It, I don't know. So as long as work. one part's in line, yeah, it doesn't matter. If the I, I rest just think it should be. I think it should be on feet. I think yeah. it should be on feet. <laughs> it's it's as easy as that. It's not difficult. They just made something so simple, so straightforward, as complicated as ever. I'm just. Flew. What are you chuckling at, Matty? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> he's like a little school kid, isn't it? Like when one of, one of the kids at school says something silly, and he's just in, in the background. You see his shoulders Tom, start going. <laughs> Tom just takes the group it right there. <laughs> <laughs> you said Dermot O'Leary. <laughs> Dermot Gallagher. <laughs> Gallagher. <laughs> Listening on together. What would you say, you know, if they had things that they were really interested in that they want to pursue, what advice would you give to them? Um, just to do whatever they, they enjoy doing. And if you like it, really, really immerse yourself in it. You know, my, my little boy loves to play football. He loves um, to do parkour, which is like a, a freestyle climbing kind of thing, running and jumping, all that stuff. My little girl, my youngest daughter likes to horse ride and, and 
do gymnastics. So I just say, and my eldest just loves makeup and typical teenager stuff. So I just said, look, I'm not going to force you to do anything. I'm not going to stop you from doing anything. But if you're going to do it, put your all into it because you never know where you're going to end up. Um, and, and they do, you know, there's, there's zero pressure from me, but at the same time, if they want me to get involved with them, like, um, my little boy with football, I don't take it easy on him, you know? So, because my dad never took it easy on me, but when I say not taking it easy, I don't mean screaming and shouting obscenities at him, telling him he's rubbish. You're not doing it right. That sort of, the sort of thing. When I've got the ball, he has to try and get the ball off me. I'm not going to let him take it. So I'll, I'll keep my arm up. And when he's got the ball, I give him little hints and tips and pointers saying, look, get your body in between the player and the ball. So then that way, if they do try and put your foot out, it's a foul. If not, then you, you've got a head start. My little girl, middle child, she loves horse riding. I'm not getting anywhere near a horse. That's not for me. That's not my <laughs> cup of tea. But I, I'll take her and I'll watch her and I'll support her. Um, and my eldest, I'm not letting her do any makeup on me either. So, you know, it's just... It's just by just just by being there, by supporting them and letting them know you you back them one hundred percent, I think that's the biggest the biggest thing any child could could uh, could ever ask for from their parents. Based based on your experience in the world of football, um, which obviously you had a good experience, but would would you want would you be fully supportive of one of your kids going into into football? Would you be happy? One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Both my girls are actually really good at football, um, and my my son's really good as well. So. I'm I'm 100% behind any of the three of them doing whatever they if they feel that's the the channel they want to go down I'm behind them 100% and I I'll open whatever doors I can do and speak to whoever I can to to get them in and you know give them pointers etc. I would never I would never tell them look I don't think that's I don't think that's for you because I like I said to you before I wouldn't want somebody telling me that I couldn't do something. I want to be able to make that decision for myself, which, you know, I want I want them to be able to do the same. Yeah, that's great advice, I think. And, and Patrick and um, Matt, if you were offering advice to a teenager now, if, you know, if they came to you and said, I'd love to be successful um, either in your chosen field or in their, you know, chosen passion, what advice would you give to them? Matt, you're smirking. I feel like this is going to be some funny advice. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just, just a terrible person to take advice from. So. Just meet up with everybody yeah. at the pub Don't afterwards. Don't take advice from me. Yeah, Don't listen, yeah exactly yeah. that. Don't listen to 31-year-old washed-up actors giving you advice. <laughs> In my, my job, your interpretation of a role, of a character, it, it, it's completely subjective and it, it might not resonate with some people, but it will with other people. And it's about... Mm. Um, I guess the idea is just that it's your truth and you, you commit to whatever it is that you're doing and someone, somewhere, will, uh, will resonate with it and, 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 um, and enjoy it. So I think, I guess, I guess you could relate it to football in that if you have, just what Bex was saying, if you have that self-belief, is the crucial thing is just to commit 100%. Don't, don't go half in. If you mm. want it, you've got to go all in. And that's, and just don't, don't leave a regret, basically, I guess is all I would say. Don't... Don't ever be in like twenty years time going. God, if I just if I'd just done a bit more, I probably I probably could have. And now I'll never know. Mm. Like at least go all in. And if you still fail, at least you know that you did everything you could. Like that's that's the only thing I'd say. I went through a little phase right at the beginning of my my Leeds career, and it wasn't until um, I had a chat with Tor Andre Flo. He he came over on loan. Um, I can't remember where he came from, and he said to me, "Listen, you've you've got a talent." But you're, you're, you're wasting it because you're not pushing yourself every day. Push yourself and see what can happen. You could go to the top, but you've got to genuinely push yourself and believe you're pushing yourself as well. You know, when you feel like you've done enough, see if you could, see if you could push another 5%. You know, it, it may not seem like much, but trust me, I've been to the top for many, many years. I think you could do it, so do it. And I, I thought to myself, do you know what? Coming from somebody like him who's who's played at some big clubs, played for his national team, scored loads and loads of goals, but is is an all-round um, brilliant football player and, and lovely person, um, means a lot. So I thought, you know what? Let's knuckle down. Let's let's really see what we've got. Let's see what we can do. And, um, you know, I think that, that kind of coincided with um, a nice little run I went on, maybe four or five games in a row scoring, um, but it was my all-round gameplay that that improved as well. My work rate, my energy, my fitness, my 
persona, everything just just improved, you know, just that little bit more. Um, so I think, yeah, that 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 along many many other um, moments of uh, incredible advice I've, I've received from people over the years. I'd say similar to what Matt and Jermaine said that what if you give a hundred percent in everything you do it in. Um, I'd also say that a big thing for me was when I was younger, mum and dad saying we'll support you in football all the way as long as you get your education. And mm. at the time, like I did, didn't really understand the importance of it, but I did it because I had to. I'd say to kids that make sure that you get what you are still concentrating on your education as well because it might seem boring and you might think, oh, doing maths and English and whatever else subjects you're doing actually aren't that valuable to them because they want to be a footballer. But it keeps you, your brain in tune, it keeps your mind in tune as well. And ultimately, it helps you. Be, if you're an intelligent footballer, I think that also stands you in good stead as well. So I think keeping your education going as well as pursuing what dreams you want to do is, is important. Basically, take mother and father's advice. Yeah. Listen to your mum and dad. <laughs> it's what every kid doesn't want to hear. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. I never, I never thought that I'd be, uh, I'd be on here doing, doing a, doing the official Leeds United podcast with Beckford and Bamford. I mean, I grew up watching, watching Beckford when I was in the cop, I had a season ticket, and now like watching Pat on TV from America, um, in the Premier League. It's just, it's this is genuinely a, 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 a dream, and. Obviously, I've had those moments as well in my actual career. Um, but in all seriousness, this is when I'm just like, I don't even know why I'm here. It's great. I love it. It's fantastic. This is Not with the Wii, but you keep turning up. <laughs> <laughs> we need to change that password, guys. <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. <laughs>